All right. Good afternoon. It's uh, unfortunate that we're back here almost a year later, uh, having gone through uh, an experience last year uh, where we as a city came together, uh, businesses, neighbors, government, and did everything that we could to prepare. Uh, the message today is uh, it's, it is just that. Be prepared. We will be getting, we just got had an update from the National Weather Service. Emergency Operations Center and Director and his team have been monitoring this since well into last week. Uh, there's still uncertainty as to impact uh, and where it will come through. So uh, make sure, again, I've been stressing this, prepare a kit, know your evacuation zone, and create a plan as to what you're going to do if you're, if you're going to be here or in the event that there's an evacuation. Way too premature to even begin talking about that, but what we can all do is be prepared. Your public works, your fire rescue, your agencies, we're in here today. Uh, we're ready and continue to prepare. Go to jacksready.com uh, to know your zone, to know what to put in your kit, and to give you suggestions to prepare a plan. Uh, one of the things that I said last night, and I'll repeat, uh, pray that this thing falls apart for everyone, but prepare as though it won't. And with that, Director, did you have any, you, did you want to add anything before we take questions? No, we'll continue to make sure that everyone is informed. And as the mayor mentioned, it really is the appropriate time for the public to be prepared as well and start those preparatory actions, just like the city is doing with all of our agencies and departments. JacksReady.com is a good site. Uh, you can view our preparedness guide on that as well. Some good tips for the public, some good checklists to go on and refer to and start taking those measures, uh, making sure that you have your kit and you have all the things that you may potentially need uh, as we look at a potential storm over the weekend. Thank you. Pay attention to the news, to the people of Jacksonville. Stay informed through whatever source you get your news. Uh, pay attention so you have updates as to exactly what's happening in the track of this storm. Questions? Mayor, um, regarding evacuations, um, obviously there's uncertainty with where the storm is going, but one track has it going over the entire peninsula. In that case, where would people evacuate to? Um, to avoid flood, flood impact. Sure, AG, it's uh, premature uh, to suggest that at this point, but what I can tell you is that uh, not only will we be having the formal meetings, uh, we are in constant communication as this thing develops, and we will give ample notice and have a plan with the Florida Department of Transportation, which we've already talked to, and with other governmental ag agencies to ensure that people have great clarity about uh, where to act and how to act. Well, it allows the free flow of resources uh, in the event that they're needed uh, based on an impact. And so, you know, we'll be monitoring that locally as well. Uh, it's premature to declare a state of emergency here. Uh, we'll be monitoring that on a day-to-day -day basis. But it's important that people know <clears throat> that if and when we make that declaration, that is about the ability to access funds to deal with uh, the storm and its aftermath. Look, we're doing everything we can to prepare people for this storm, and I would encourage them to go to jacksready.com and know what they need, uh, know their zone, and have a plan uh, should we issue additional instructions. Is there a reason why Duval doesn't provide sandbags? We have 860-some thousand residents in the Jackson, city of Jacksonville. Uh, things are about resources and finite resources, and we have priorities to ensure, first, the, people, the safety of the people of Jacksonville. So a couple of things. There will be, there have been shelters identified. They will be announced at the appropriate time. There will be shelters uh, for special needs. And then director, I don't know if you want to more specifically answer that. Yes, yeah, certainly it's never too late for anyone who is a special needs uh, client to register with us. They can do that online at jacksready.com. But I do encourage people who have special needs, meaning medical needs, uh, uh, in need of oxygen or making sure that they have power to contact us. They can do so online or by telephone. 630 City is also available to assist them. But certainly special needs clients in the city should contact us. Uh, Mayor, a question for you and the council president jointly. Uh, we talked about FEMA funds. Uh, we haven't gotten all of our FEMA money from, from Matthew. 
Um, obviously, we've seen what's happened in Houston and Beaumont, places like that. Um, is the city ready for that kind of hit should it happen? And in terms of you know flooding and other issues, um, you know we supposedly have 150 million or so in reserves. Um, what if that could be tapped in worst case scenario? Should we so, AG, we um, you know in the event of another Matthew, we have adequate reserves. Uh, in the event of a catastrophic uh, of a catastrophic event. Uh, we've got uh, a budget that's got priorities, and safety comes first. So if we ever had to realign priorities in an emergency situation, uh, we would do just that and uh, I'd, I'd be able to do what we have to do to make sure that we take care of our people. FEMA owes us 20 million, 27, 27 million. Twenty-seven million. Absolutely, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Why not? Why is that important to you? We stand ready to help our neighbors uh, uh, when they need us and when they ask and have offered it our services as such. Some, some of what you're seeing right now, though, is uh, some that were deployed. It's coordinated through the state. And some that were deployed are now c coming back home because they have to be here to be prepared for uh, what is unfortunately could be coming at us. What lessons were learned from Matthew? Um, obviously, JA had power outages for close to a week in some areas. Uh, we had other issues, but you know, going forward from Matthew, what what lessons are you going to apply for the rest of your administration? I mean, you, you always have to have a plan. Uh, you got to work the plan on the front end. You got to work the plan in the middle of the event. You got to work the plan after the event, uh, and you can always, always uh, communicate uh, more broadly and with more people. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, all the interested parties were in there today, the agencies, including the JEA, and you know, they're, they're talking with the mutual aid to ensure, you know, access to manpower, et cetera. So I'd say always have a plan and refine that plan. And that's what happens in these, uh, these meetings. And not only in the meetings, the meetings are the deb debrief, but the day-to-day -day work that the people of the EOC do on a day-to-day -day basis. This is the most important thing that people of Jacksonville can do right now. And I'm going to say this over and over and over again. Go to jacksready.com if you need information, have a plan, know your evacuation zone, and prepare a kit. Prepare yourself. Your city's preparing. You need to prepare yourselves and your families for the possibility of an event. That is the most important thing you can do right now. It's too early to determine the impact. It's too early to determine the trajectory. We'll know more tonight. We'll know more tomorrow. And we will communicate that to the public as soon as we have that information. Just be ready. Don't panic. Just be ready. More on preparation as you're talking about people are doing this. You've got public works out there. You've got JDA. What specifically is public works doing right now? Well, some of this is stuff they do on, the day on, a, day to on a regular basis. Now they're just doing it you know, at one time given a possible event, making sure areas that drainage that could be clogged because of debris and other natural things that happen, ensuring that that stuff's cleared out. Um, that's an example, and we can get you many more. Sure. But they're working. And then JEA, I mean, we all know the problems last year, and I'm right behind you. Sure. What, right now, is there anything that is changing that you're doing differently that you didn't do at this point? Sure, well, I, we, in the, in the conversation there, uh, I asked the question about some of the things, one of which was the sewer spills, and I'll let Paul address. Yeah, we, here in town. we have, we, we have uh, well over 300 additional uh, uh, generators on, on site, both mobile and fixed. And uh, right now we have people in the field starting those, making sure they're prepared to go in the event we're, we're flooded. And we have people preparing in terms of the distribution lines as well, walking and looking at the lines um, and, and, and looking at areas where it might clean up before storm hits. So total preparation. And one of the other questions that I asked, you know, the JEA has agreements, they call them mutual aid agreements, with the utilities that can come in and help in the event we need manpower. I asked, do we have the ability to go outside of those agreements if the help is offered and have been assured that yes, the, the answer to that is yes. Okay, one more time. Everybody should know this, but please do it. Have a plan, prepare a kit, and know your zone. Don't wait until an event if there's an event upon us, don't wait till it's here. 
do it now. And we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. We will have another briefing tomorrow. Probably the same time, but we'll confirm. You'll get a message. Thank you. You guys, hey, all of the members here of the media, last year we were all in this together. Every single one of us, you guys did a fantastic job of getting the message out. I want to say thank you and let's do it again.